Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to share my experience of switching from using a separate guide scope to off-axis guiding and how it improved my astrophotography. I'll show you why off-axis guiding is a game changer and why you shouldn't be afraid to try it. In case you don't know, let me briefly explain the difference between using a guide scope and off-axis guiding. A guide scope is a separate telescope with a guide camera that usually plays on top of your imaging telescope. Its sole purpose is to track stars and let the software correct mount errors. An off-axis guider, on the other hand, is an adapter that you install within your imaging train and usually it goes in front of your imaging camera. It has a small prism that sends a part of the light that goes from your main imaging telescope directly to the guide camera that you install over here. So with the off-axis guider, you guide on stars using the same telescope that does imaging with no need in a separate guide scope. Now, I avoided OHGs for years because to me it sounded intimidating. I bet some of you are thinking the same. And here are some of the big concerns that I had about off-axis guiding before getting one. So first, I thought that setting up an OEG was hard in general and uh, at the beginning it really might look tricky. When you use off-axis guiders, uh, then you need to consider your back focus, different threads that you need to use to connect all the parts together, or in some cases you need to get an additional adapters to connect OEG uh, to your imaging train. Second, I worried about finding guide stars using short exposures of a guide camera. Separate guide scopes, they usually have a focal length that is no more than 200 mm and you can place many stars within the field of view. When using an OHG, you guide on the same focal length as your image, so in some areas of the night sky, there will be naturally fewer amount of bright stars to guide on. Third, if you use different filters, then you need to refocus your telescope occasionally when you switch to a different filter, and changing the focus of the main camera also changes the focus of your guide camera. The new position of the focuser might be good for the imaging camera, but the guide camera will be out of focus, so I thought it wouldn't be possible to achieve good guiding results if you change the filter, and I thought that you need to go and uh, change the focus of your guide camera as well all the time, which uh, to me it all sounded like a lot of job that I didn't want to do. Well, how wrong I was about everything. Currently I have switched to two OHGs on two of my telescopes. The first one is 122mm SV Boini SV550 telescope and the second one is my 10-inch Metalix 200 EMC. And let me tell you how each of my previous concerns was resolved. First, the setup process. Yes, in some cases you really need to think about how you want to configure your imaging train. There are many different manufacturers that offer OEGs and I ended up working with TopeTech. The reason I choose that is that TopeTech solution easily integrates with their TopeTech 2600 KMA camera that I got at the end of the last year. What I like about TopeTech is that I use screws to connect the OEG within the imaging train, which I believe is much better compared to threads. Also, it seamlessly integrates with the filter wheel and I have two OEGs from TopeTech that work with both a TopeTech filter wheel and a ZWO filter wheel. I believe this is the best way to configure your imaging train where you basically have your camera sensor first, then you have a filter wheel and at the end you got a prism with a OEG that is not affected by any filters or anything and uh, pretty much you get the light straight from your main imaging telescope into the prism. Also you can use a TopeTech filter drawer instead of a wheel if you use a color camera for example. Or also if you use a color camera you still can use a filter wheel and I made a video about it, link will be like right here in the corner. So while TopeTech solution works for me, it might not work well for others. So for example, uh, if you use a Svibony camera, those only use thread connections and I tried placing the TopeTech OAG with an SV Boni camera. I made it work, but it really was a bit of a painful process to align the prism with the sensor and keep the threads tight. So the point here is that at first you might need to take some time to figure out what kind of OAG will work better for your current imaging setup and if you guys have any questions on that part, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. My second concern about locating guide stars disappeared after a few imaging sessions. At the beginning, when using an OEG, I tried my old ZW120mm mini camera with uh, this SV Boni telescope and I had no issues locating stars to guide on, even in the areas that don't have that many stars and uh, I like kind of was testing that during the galaxy season. However, I faced the problem when I tried 120mm mini camera using with my 10-inch SCT telescope. So in some areas of the night sky, it couldn't locate bright enough stars 
to guide on. So I either had to rotate the field of view, which also affects the rotation that you desire for your imaging project, or even switch to a different project that would have uh, bright enough stars to guide on. Well, here the problem was easily and fully resolved when I simply upgraded to CWO to 20mm mini camera for OAG on the 10-inch Schmidt-Cassegrain telescope. The 20mm mini has a much better sensor with more sensitivity and less noise. The pixel size is also more suitable specifically for that telescope. And once I switched to, to 20mm mini, all my problems were gone, at least for now. So the key point here is that you'll be fine using a cheaper guide cameras with OAG on telescopes with lower focal lengths, but if you're going to a higher focal length system such as ATs, then you will really need to invest in more suitable guide cameras as well. And uh, the final thing I wanted to add about uh, finding and locating the stars and using cameras is that you really won't be able to use this type of cameras, but rather this one, the more elongated and can uh, deeply go within the back focus of the off-axis guider. My third concern was using OAG on out-of-focus stars. What can I say? No issues here whatsoever. Nowadays PHD2 software works great at analyzing star shapes and if a star is a bit of out of focus then the software can still provide good guiding results. Also in some cases you might see a picture where your stars are slightly elongated because the prism of the OAG is located uh, closer to the edge of the reducer, for example, and I had a situation a few times at the beginning of using off-axis guiders, and guess what? PHD2 worked great with this case as well. Currently, I have the perfect back focus distance set on both of my telescopes, uh, SV550 and uh, uh, schmidt cassegrain telescopes, so my stars look round everywhere within the field of view of uh, an off-axis guider. Finally, let's cover the benefits of using an OEG, and there are basically two main pros. First, use a higher focal length compared to a guide scope, leading to more precise guiding. This means your guiding is more accurate, especially for longer focal length telescopes like schmidt cassegrains because OAGs, they track stars at the same magnification as your imaging, catching even tiny mount errors. Second, use the same light path for guiding and imaging, and this part is really important. So when using a separate guide scope, let's say, you decide to use SAT and uh, you can install like 500 millimeter telescope on top of that to use as a guide scope. So you might have good guiding numbers below one arc seconds, let's say, but your images will have star streaks. Why is that? Well, because of the thing called flexure. Flexure is when your guide scope and main telescope bend slightly out of alignment, causing tracking errors. Even with great guiding numbers, this can make your stars look poorer with some streaks and uh, simply because two telescopes aren't perfectly synced. And this might not be an issue when you're using a small refractor telescope, but something that you would likely notice on higher focal length systems. To sum up, I've had great experience using an off-axis guider. It's not scary, it solves flexure and with a modern gear it's easier than ever before. So if you're also thinking about using an OAG for your imaging rig, then I highly recommend it. Just before getting one, consider how it will connect all the parts together. Another option would be getting a ZWO2 camera as well that has an integrated guide chip, but that's a topic for another video. Talking about using a separate guide scope, it's still a good guiding option that you can easily use on lower focal length systems. But once you dive into a higher focal length astrophotography or longer sub-exposures, then the OAG will have a much better performance, of course. So this is all I got for this video, guys. If you have any questions or want to share your opinion or experience on using a no axis guiding, then I welcome you in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching this video at the end, really hope to see you in my future videos, and until next time guys!